Imagine a lifeline for millions, a colossal reservoir born of human ambition, slowly but relentlessly receding, revealing the ghosts of a forgotten past. Imagine the very source of power for bustling cities now struggling to sustain itself. This isn't a dystopian novel. This is the unfolding reality at Lake Mead, the vast expanse of water currently sitting at a perilous 1,055.26 feet MSL as of 2 a.m. on Thursday, June 26, 2025. A mere 0.02 feet dropped since yesterday, yet this minuscule daily decline belies a monumental crisis. The lake is a staggering 173.74 feet below its full capacity of 1,229.00 feet. This isn't just a number on a gauge, it's a stark, measurable threat to the American Southwest, revealing the deepening cracks in a once unshakable foundation. At the heart of this dramatic transformation stands the iconic Hoover Dam, a monument to human ingenuity from the throes of the Great Depression. Once a vibrant symbol of optimism, harnessing the mighty Colorado River for irrigation and electricity, this aging marvel is now battling the forces of hydrological change. Its very purpose, generating hydropower, is under severe threat as its lifeblood, Lake Mead, continues its alarming retreat. Hoover Dam's power struggle, a shrinking giant's burden. Hydropower, the clean, efficient energy born from the sheer force of water, has been Hoover Dam's enduring legacy. Yet, that legacy is weakening with every foot the lake drops. In 2023, the dam's power generation had already been halved compared to its output in 2000. The last year Lake Mead was effectively full. Back then, it boasted an impressive generating capacity of 2,080 megawatts, comparable to a large modern power plant. Today, that capacity has dwindled to 1,304 megawatts. The real concern, however, lies in the imminent threshold. The Bureau of Reclamation, the federal body overseeing the basin's colossal dams, has issued a stark warning. Should Lake Mead fall another 20 feet from its current elevation, reaching the critical 1,035-foot breakpoint, Hoover Dam's capacity to generate electricity would be slashed by an additional 70% from its already reduced levels. At this dangerous mark, 12 of the older turbines, units not engineered for such low reservoir levels, would be forced offline. This phenomenon, known as cavitation, where reduced water pressure forms damaging air bubbles, underscores the fragility of aging infrastructure facing unprecedented conditions. Only five newer, low-head turbines, installed a decade ago at a cost of $42 million and capable of operating down to 950 feet, would remain active. If the older units cease operation, Hoover's power output would plummet to a mere 382 megawatts. Beyond the megawatts, a lifeline for communities. While federal dams along the Colorado River contribute just over 4% of Arizona's total generating capacity, their importance cannot be understated. The cheap electricity they provide is a critical lifeline for geographically isolated tribes and numerous small, rural electric providers who rely on it for their very existence. Furthermore, hydropower's unique flexibility, its rapid ability to ramp power generation up or down, is indispensable for stabilizing and regulating the region's complex electric grid, efficiently matching the fluctuating demands of daily life, from peak summer air conditioning to nighttime lulls. A hydropower shortfall will be bad news for us, cautioned Ed Gerak, executive director of the Irrigation and Electrical Districts Association of Arizona. Eric Witkowski, executive director of the Colorado River Commission of Nevada, further elaborated on the disproportionate impact a shortfall would have on rural electric companies in his state, which receive a larger share of their power from these dams. Any curtailment of this flexible and inexpensive power source would inevitably lead to increased electricity costs across the region and introduce significant challenges to the seamless integration of renewable energy into the existing grid. Future projections, a ticking clock, the threat is becoming increasingly tangible, exacerbated by the worsening runoff forecast for the basin this year. The Bureau of Reclamation's monthly updates on two-year reservoir-level projections reveal a sobering outlook. The latest June update indicates a 10% chance that Lake Mead could breach the critical 1,035-foot threshold by spring 2027. In a more severe, albeit less probable, worst-case scenario, this breach could even occur by the end of 2026, coinciding ominously with the expiration of current operating rules for both Lake Mead and Lake Powell. 
Adding to the concern, modeling also suggests a similar chance that Lake Powell could drop to levels low enough in 2027 to render Glen Canyon Dam, another pivotal hydropower asset, inoperable. While the probability of Lake Mead reaching such extreme depths remains statistically small and is inherently laden with uncertainties about weather and water use, its growing likelihood is significant enough to trigger palpable concern among Hoover's power customers. Their apprehension is well-founded. In the event of a power shortfall, they are compelled to procure electricity at considerably higher market rates. The quest for solutions, a race against the flow. The Bureau of Reclamation is keenly aware of the escalating problem at Hoover Dam and is actively evaluating potential solutions. The agency estimates that replacing the 12 older, non-low-head compatible turbines would be a substantial investment, costing an estimated $156 million. The process itself is not swift. Ordering new turbines is a lengthy process as they have to be designed, model tested, built and ultimately installed, the agency clarified in a statement to Circle of Blue, underscoring the time-consuming nature of such critical upgrades. Meanwhile, influential interest groups like the IEDA are not passively observing. They are actively advocating for immediate fixes, urging Reclamation and the Interior Department to leverage federal infrastructure funds for the installation of new low-head turbines or to secure direct appropriations from Congress. They are also actively engaged in lobbying their congressional representatives to support the HELP Hoover Dam Act, a proposed bill that would unlock approximately $50 million in ratepayer funds, currently earmarked for federal employee pension benefits, for crucial dam upgrades. Furthermore, they propose establishing an organization, modeled after the successful National Parks Foundation, to facilitate public and private donations for dam operations and maintenance, including the Essential Visitor Center. These proposed solutions, however, demand valuable time, a commodity that Lake Mead's continuously receding waters are making increasingly scarce. As the reservoir continues its relentless decline, the urgency to implement these vital upgrades and adapt to the undeniable realities of a drier climate will only intensify. The Hoover Dam, once a proud testament to humanity's ability to tame nature, now stands as a profound symbol of a warming climate's tangible and growing threat, compelling us to find innovative solutions before its once mighty roar fades into an unnerving silence. If this update provided valuable insight, we encourage you to like this video, subscribe to our channel for further crucial analysis, and enable notifications to receive our latest reports. Your perspective is highly valued. Please share your comments below.